Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our webinar. I'm Joel Zuknovich, Group Senior Trading Manager with GDM. Today's uh, webinar, ladies and gentlemen, will have a look at uh, fundamentals and more specifically uh, Forex fundamental analysis. We will discuss uh, pretty much uh, the economic factors and indicators that can be uh, used to evaluate economy economic reports and news that affect currency value most definitely we will not miss exporting goods and services financial markets and they react to news and of course we will summarize that up briefly to find out what we've learned so far and at the end but not least we will have a look at the top forex fundamentals top five forex fundamentals that move the market strongly every day going forward uh, I will of course make a uh, slight step back to have a look at the uh, key factors of fundamental analysis uh, as we spoke the last time that was uh, this week on Wednesday we spoke about natural disasters, economic growth and output, inflation, interest rates, political situation, financial policies, uh, fiscal and monetary policies as well. Of course, all of this we will now break down to pieces and see exactly which one of those sections fit perfectly for a fundamental analysis to Forex. The first thing that uh, we will start with is uh, by finding out what fundamental analysis for Forex is in general and then of course we will move forward to uh, more in-depth uh, research over the fundamental analysis and basically what moves currencies. Uh, here you can uh, follow up on the agenda on what's about to come. Uh, please of course bear in mind that um, during the transition between one topic to another uh, there might be some questions so don't hesitate to write them down into the chat or just send us an email at the appointed email address webinar at gdmfx.com so we can of course uh, directly answer to your email also, uh, you can uh, ask for a one-on-one -on -one personal session, whether it's with me or any of our uh, junior analysts uh, of the company. Uh, so far, we have received numerous uh, propositions for uh, different types of webinars. Uh, we will, of course, uh, categorize all of this in the future. Uh, there are a lot of, um, should I say, more like requests to make uh, live trading sessions. Uh, with a group of traders which I'm strongly considering uh, however uh, due to my uh, daily duties here at, at the company uh, it might be a bit more difficult to spend long hours of trading along with you but uh, I, I will see how that might be possible and we might connect the dots with uh, some technical um, technical strategies that we spoke before uh, some that are making should I say uh, more much more impression to to you guys as uh, as traders from first hand uh, second of all will of course uh, might be able to trade around the news but this is still in a the transition therefore uh, this is something that you might be able to expect in the future uh, basically you will see uh, the way I'm making my decisions uh, live on the charts uh, also how exactly I'm closing my positions and this is something that you might take as an example or uh, just guide yourself through on the correct direction of the market so uh, fundamental analysis for Forex now this when we're referring to our Forex it involves studying the economy of a country, a specific country, to determine the effect this has on the value of its currency. Understanding the relationship, ladies and gentlemen, between an economy and its uh, currency value can, can also allow a trader to determine 
to a degree, of course, the demand and likely increase or decrease in value for a particular currency. This, of course, can give a trader a, a, an, an enormous advantage because um, uh, they can determine whether a currency pair is likely to rise or likely to fall. We'll explain this in a more um, details uh, throughout uh, today's session, ladies and gentlemen. But first of all, I, I need you to uh, pay attention to the little things here. I will underline them from time to time to remind you how everything is connected to each other. Uh, basically, every day the um, webinars uh, that we're taking uh, two times a week, everything is connected. You know, we're starting from this more simple point, uh, then we're breaking down and going in inside every uh, piece of information. Uh, and so the last webinar, we will have a look at, um, uh, this is something I want to mention right now, so uh, you can be prepared to see uh, why this is so important to be at the last webinar. Uh, basically, um, I'm preparing you to uh, find out what exactly is moving uh, currencies and currency pairs, most uh, particular. And at uh, the last webinar, we'll find out how to calculate currency strength. Now, this is a mathematical method, of course, uh, to calculate in percentages how strong one currency pair is uh, in, in, a, um, uh, in a graphic of a five different currency pairs or ten different currency pairs. That's uh, up, to, up to you to, to decide. But, of course, I will uh, let you know by the most simple way how you can achieve that. Um, this is uh, something that you can look for as into clues uh, during today's session. Also, uh, next week's session, when we have a look at uh, fundamental analysis for commodities, uh, all of that is connected. So right now, we will uh, have a look at the uh, economic indicators that can be uh, used to evaluate any economy. Uh, you can have a look at, uh, this is the first uh, headline for today. So uh, there are certain economic indicators, ladies and gentlemen, or reports that forex traders can observe in order to determine the strength of any economy. These reports are of course related by uh, uh, the, these um, particular reports are released by uh, governments and independent type of bodies who collect and analyze data, the data prior to uh, its publishing. Uh, of course they're released at uh, set times and can be, of course, released weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annually, depending on the report itself. Now, tra traders will actually generally look at the latest results of each report, as well as any changes to the results from the, the uh, last published report. Um, I'm saying that in a connection to uh, what we're seeing every day on the economic calendar. Now you can see that we have the actual numbers, the previous numbers, and of course in between we have the forecast or the consensus, depending on what you like to uh, address it. Um, it usually uh, the consensus or the forecast is um, what is actually expected to happen somewhere around these numbers. Now, most uh, most interesting uh, fact here is. Um, when the actual numbers come out uh, different from the consensus. Um, they, of course, flash in uh, red or green, depending on the economic calendar that you uh, rely on. It might be uh, green, it might be blue, or it might be uh, no color at all. And you have to make the comparison on your own. But uh, in the case that, um, for example, certain numbers exceed expectations or uh, miss expectations by some numbers, this is not so crucial. Basically this consensus is uh, made by a, a group of analysts that uh, they have different key indicators that they are calculating uh, certain economic activity and development which uh, they public for the masses should I put it this way, which means that it does not have that much effect rather than the actual numbers compared to the previous. 
So the first market reaction would be on whether the actual numbers are above or below expectations. But after the market noise is over, we can actually see the direction of a currency pair, not because it's affected from the consensus numbers that they've been missed or exceeded, but because the actual numbers were bigger or smaller than the previous. So this is the information that you need to remember, especially when you're reading economic calendar. Now this is something that uh, I will uh, ha have a look at uh, as we usually do a slight deviation from uh, from the topic uh, when we're having the webinars. Usually at that time there is a ma major announcement. So what we're expecting in about 18 minutes from now, um, we'd get the uh, consumer price index for US. Also uh, breaking down consumer price index excluding food and energy. Now those two are the most important ones. So if we have the consumer price index year on year, we have the consensus numbers for minus one-tenth of a percent. Then we have the previous numbers minus one-tenth of a percent. That means um, analysts or forecasters are actually uh, predicting no change at all to the consumer price index. Now what the curious fact is that those two are aligned. So basically uh, the consensus is equal to the previous. Therefore uh, what you can see is uh, whether it's going to be red for a, a missed consensus and of course a below previous or green for uh, exceeding expectations and bigger than previous. But when we have the consumer price index excluding food and energy, which is actually uh, forecasted to come out uh, smaller, um, you know, lower with one tenth of a percent, that means 1.7 percent from 1.8 percent on the previous. Now this here, the actual numbers compared to the previous numbers will have much bigger impact on the market in the long term. Uh, I mean, in the mid, mid to the long term, uh, and uh, smaller effect on the market um, on the short term. So what I'm saying is that if the numbers exceed expectations or uh, it's uh, actually unchanged from previous, which it might come out 1.8, 8%. This still is going to be above expectations, which is 1.7%, but it's unchanged from previous, which means it will have virtually no effect on uh, mid to the long term. What effect will be is to the short term fluctuation of the price. Basically said, it will uh, bring a lot of volatility for short term period on the market, where uh, different uh, type of traders such as scalpers in intraday traders are looking so they can pick their uh, right direction on the market, especially uh, when they're trading with large volume on a um, five-minute chart, for example. This uh, brings them a quite good, quite good profits, uh, should I put it this way. So uh, speaking of which, uh, moving forward to um, uh, the economic reports and news that uh, will affect the currency value a strong economy is more likely to present opportunities for businesses such as returns or real estate. The stock market or other businesses might be uh, a good opportunity as well. However, if an economic report, for example, therefore shows that uh, an economy is stronger, then domestic and foreign investors private or corporate as well, may seek investment opportunities in that particular country. In, in order, of course, to invest capital into a country, an investor will need to do this in the local currency. So if it is uh, persevered that an economy will produce great return for investment, then the local currency will be more in demand and of course has the currency value is likely to appreciate. So the more investment comes in, the stronger the currency will be. Which 
brings us to the next step of the uh, exporting goods and services that are affecting the currency value. So that means that if an economy is strong in a particular sector, for example in manufacturing or financial services, then they are likely to export those manufactured goods or financial services abroad. This is a piece of information that we're getting usually every day. Industrial sales, industrial orders, for example, manufacturing uh, activity, something that we uh, recently uh, saw was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, yesterday, let me have a look one more time about this, yes, uh, a market manufacturing purchases, purchases managers index. This is also for the manufacturing sector. For, uh, for US, it came out negative yesterday and it came out negative from expectations which were for a, an increase with four tenths of a percent. Instead, it actually uh, came down not only from previous which came down with, a, with about three tenths of a percent, but it also came down with seven tenths of a percent from the consensus. So this particular thing means that uh, there is a, a, a slack into the manufacturing sector over there, which means it's a stable economy because the index is above 50, but there is a slight contraction in that sector. Of course, uh, another thing that we will have a look at uh, later today. This is the uh, um, the uh, construction um, businesses, and most definitely in home sales. So um, consumers that are, are purchasing these uh, types of goods that I mentioned before, the home sales, which we we'll of course have a look at later, um, are uh, services that will have to convert their domestic currency to the local currency of the producer. So uh, the more demand there is for their goods and services, the higher the demand for the local currency will be and so the value of it will appreciate. Financial markets react on news extremely well with uh, very strong momentum. This is when economic reports are released. There is a certain amount of uh, speculation, of course, on uh, what the results may be. That's the consensus that we're talking about. So forex traders, for example, they buy or sell currencies in anticipation of this. For example, if the results of uh, an economic report are expected to be negative, then the traders, of course, will sell the currency in question uh, ahead of this report's release, causing the price to fall. When this happens, the markets are referred to be uh, as uh, priced in, as we were usually, you know, um, expressing this uh, kind of uh, um, kind of way with the market term. Uh, the, 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 let's say the um, currency pair or the commodity or the market in general is pricing in. That means that uh, by the time the event has taken place, the price has already changed as expected. However, when the data is released and is in line with the expected results, there is a generally a minimum impact on the price movement. However, if the report results is significantly different to the expected value, volatile price movement may occur as traders uh, try to price in these new and unexpected results. But this is only for the short term. As we mentioned, we always have to pay attention to the uh, results that we have today compared to the results that we had the last time. That is extremely important to remember. Now, this is uh, uh, something that I need to sneak in here about the publishing times that are usually uh, released 
in advance. Now you can, uh, uh, as you already know, you can use that um, the uh, economic calendar, uh, whether it's our economic economic calendar or you already used to using something else and you understand it much better, uh, uh, to uh, keep an eye on various news releases. Of course, um, the dates and times, as you already know, will be uh, published in advance, and you can keep track on them. The financial markets frequently get uh, um, disturbed by unexpected events. This can cause rapid price volatility and may change the direction of a trend. So, this is something that you always have to have at hand, your economic calendar. Um, this is something that uh, pretty much everybody knows. It's not much of a uh, uh, news flash, but um, yesterday I had a uh, I had a trader here. He was so desperate to speak with uh, someone uh, more experienced uh, that uh, I had to drop down a few other um, a few other traders so, so I can take him in and see exactly what he needs. Um, his question was, uh, why the price, uh, or, or should I uh, put it exactly how, how he said it, but uh, I will not exactly mention uh, in details. That means why the currency pair surged, for example, 250 pips just about now. What was the reason? And then I was extremely uh, surprised to find out that the person didn't even pay attention to the economic calendar. To find out that um, just about now, the data that was re released for the uh, 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 for this particular country that he was uh, buying the local currency against the US dollar came out with reports better than expected and better the pre than previous. And of course, in result, everyone knows that this can be the beginning of a or the continuation of a current trend. And that person has been trading for so long. So what I mean is it doesn't matter if you are a technical trader or a fundamental trader or any kind of trader. Always have your economic calendar at hand because even better if you are a technical trader you need to know where the laws of physics will f will uh, uh, will not matter because you know, we know that uh, when a piece of information is released the price jumps or slopes down. And rapid price movement can occur during news releases. The initial reaction in the currency market after a news release can be very volatile, as we already mentioned. This is because institutional traders would generally uh, stay out of entering new positions during the release, and they will close short-term positions just prior to those releases. This results in a decreased liquidity of the currency pair or an asset of any choosing. After a news release such as, um, let's say, in the US, non-farm non -farm payrolls, a currency pair can quickly whipsaw in both directions, making trading conditions very difficult. That's why very often as a technical, uh, from a technical perspective, because I'm a mostly technical trader, I've been mentioning that uh, when we have major announcements, speeches, so on and so on, at least one hour prior and one hour after the news release or the piece of information that you are about to get, stay away from the market. Wait until the market comes down and pick up a direction. Then you will know, then you will have your technical indicator and your market will be priced in and then you will know that there will be my, there will be little surprise uh, on, on the market to to expect, of course. This is why the economic calendar should always be in your pocket. So, what did we uh, learn so far? We have learned that forex fundamental analysis involves studying the economy to determine the effect it has on the value of the currency. So here is the moment that when I where, where I mention the value of the currency. This is something that we will talk about at the end of the month, the last Friday of this month. This is next week. How to find out 
what is the value of a currency compared to any other. We also have learned that if uh, an economy is uh, determined to be strong, then it's very likely that the local currency will uh, rise in value. Also, we've learned that economic reports can be used to determine how strong an economy is and that these reports are released at uh, set times and that the uh, release times are generally published in advance. So you have to always pay attention and expect this, not to be left surprised and uh, uh, for some reason unknown to you to lose uh, your funds on the market. The next uh, uh, chapter today, we will have a look at uh, the top five Forex fundamentals. As you can see them here, aligned from the strongest to the weakest, uh, basically I've arranged the top five is uh, pretty much because this is all you're going to need as to uh, uh, most volatile uh, fundamentals which are moving uh, any particular currency. As we already know, the foreign exchange market has grown to be the most liquid financial market in the world. In its uh, three annual survey last year, the uh, Bank of International uh, Settlement found that the Forex market is now trading more than $4 trillion in a daily turnover, more than any other financial market. To help any investor uh, uh, learning um, all the tricks, I have compiled this list of top five fundamental factors in the Forex market always to help you and to have it as, uh, should I say, as a business card. You have to have it as a business card. One, two, three, four, five. These are the top five moving forces. Starting with the interest rates. Forex markets, a complex, and this is a very complex, and while there are many uh, fundamental factors that affect their value, ultimately interest rates and um, expectations of their direction are key to market moving. So investors are uh, going to try and assess any kind of securities with the best return, for example, weighing the risk. Implications as well. Interest rates are uh, directly controlled by a country or, uh, or region's uh, central bank. Uh, changes, of course, to a country's key rate. Okay, I will um, uh, make a slight pause here. Let's have a look at the calendar, what we have today. Consumer price index came negative, minus 0.2% from previous minus 0.1%. And of course, the consumer price index that uh, is excluding food and energy, it came in line with expectations, as I mentioned, that this is the, high, the highest probability, 1.8% from 1.8% previous, which is unchanged. Uh, this is year on year. And as you might be able to uh, already, uh, already looking at the uh, financial calendars, uh, you will see that it comes out in green uh, because it's uh, higher than expected. But it will have little uh, effect on the market so far. Uh, in terms of um, actual numbers to previous numbers. So we might be able to see some uh, price action move, very strong one, should I say. Uh, let's have a look at that as well. I don't particularly know if... Uh, let me have a look at the... Uh, yes, the euro dollar. Euro dollar is uh, slightly down. The pound, uh, the uh, USD JPY is uh, uh, strongly up. Uh, the USD Canadian dollar is uh, up. So we have a, a strong uh, dollar in this case, but not only because of the not only because of the um, uh, 
uh, positive uh, consumer price index is, as we said, in terms of consensus, which came out of 1.8%, um, which is unchanged from previous, but it actually moved so strongly because of the, consens the uh, consumer price index, excluding food and energy, month on month for April. That means that the um, second quarter of this year can can be quite good for US, which means for the long-term investors or speculators of the timing of interest rate increase in the US, this plays a huge role. All right. Now, we had one-tenth of a percent increase, which means 0.3% uh, uh, actual numbers, 0.2% consensus, and 0.2% previous. This is what is moving the market right now. Uh, not to mention that the uh, consumer price index month-on-month uh, -month for April, the whole one, is um, uh, slightly negative than the expected, which, we, which is right now 236.6. This is 1,000, for those that doesn't know. And the consensus was uh, 236.71 which is about, what, uh, point, uh, 11 higher, it's 11,000 higher, but the previous one was 236.12, which means it doesn't matter that the numbers come in red because they're uh, actually uh, lower than expected, but they're actually previously higher, higher than the previous and higher with about uh, uh, 48,000. So this is what matters. That's why we have so such uh, a big surge in the dollar at the moment. And we can see uh, gold is down, the euro is down, the pound is down, but not because uh, those particular um, uh, currencies and commodities are weak, but because at the moment the dollar is strong. And this is what we can see uh, as a market reaction. So uh, moving forward to our interest rates, as we were uh, so far talking about, the, inter the interest rates are directly controlled uh, by a country or a uh, region's uh, central bank, and changes to a country's key rate are a uh, central bank's most powerful tools and have a significant effect on the currency. So when you look at uh, countries, most powerful tool and have a uh, so, so when you when you look at um, uh, countries and that they're um, uh, uh, talking about um, rising interest rates, everybody watches uh, that very closely because any indication that their central bank is uh, even considering a change can cause a dramatic move in the currency. Interest rate changes have taken on new meaning in the current, in the current uh, economic environment and of course rate changes have been magnified in the forex market. This is what you need to remember ladies and gentlemen. While interest rates uh, are uh, a general fundamental factor of currencies, they also provide the impetus for the carry trade where traders buy the currency from a country which is a higher interest rate and sell the currency of a country which, uh, with a lower interest rate, earning the differential. The trade generally works, but can can become over uh, overvalued, of course, leading to massive reversal. Understanding the uh, dynamics of the uh, carry trade is a, a growing fundamental factor that is important to understand. That is why we need to have a look at the employment. This is the second uh, important piece of uh, information, the second uh, of our top five Forex fundamentals. While the uh, Federal Reserve in the United States, as we're looking at it uh, at the moment, has a, a dual mandate to stabilize prices and, of course, to promote full employment, that is not necessarily the case for other central banks. Interest rates as we mentioned uh, uh, 
a few minutes ago, uh, directly controlled are directly controlled by central banks. But employment and economic growth are aren't necessarily under their control. So employment numbers are a factor for two reasons. First, employment directly affects consumer spending. This is very important to remember it. Employment directly affects consumer spending. That is why when we, you have uh, uh, unemployment rate and you see if it's uh, lower or you have um, non-farm payrolls and you see them that they, that they are uh, lower, uh, that means that the next thing that you uh, can predict is the consumer spending or vice versa. Second, consumer spending affects inflation which of course pays into central banks decision on interest rate rise. So do you see everything ropes around, everything is in the circle which is connected. One cause leads to another. That's why all of those five top uh, Forex fundamentals are like your business card. This is what you need to have, always at, at your disposal. So as uh, employment increases, uh, you can expect, uh, as we mentioned, consumer spending in the country to, in, uh, to increase a bit. That's uh, going to increase uh, the domestic demand and, of course, help with employment further. If it, of course, uh, gets to a point where inflation is a concern, that's when you will see central banks stepping in and rising interest rates to ease spending. Employment can have an immediate effect on currencies while potentially providing a forecast of what the central bank might do. So this is, one more time please ladies and gentlemen, let me mention that those top five Forex fundamentals you need to have them at your disposal all the time because this, by using only this, you will have a look at for the mid to the long term what a government is up to and what this particular currency, uh, it, whether it's going to go higher or it's going to go lower. Which of course you will be able to measure how strong it is at this particular moment, whether to buy it now or to buy it let's say in a couple of months. And this is for the uh, mid to long term. Furthermore, uh, a, th a third very important uh, uh, piece of Forex fundamental, we uh, have, will have a look at the economic growth and trade. A lot of uh, reports and outlooks, of course, uh, factor into countries' expectations for economic growth. Everyone knows that. While, of course, uh, as we mentioned uh, so far, I'll just uh, go one more through it. Uh, while interest rates and employment numbers can point to uh, those ex can point to those expectations, other reports also provide insights into where a country's economy is headed. You can look at the GDP, for example, the consumer price index that we already saw right now for U.S. Anything that shows inflation or growth, all those things add to the theory. If manufacturers are increasing their inventory, you can take uh, that as a sign that they expect businesses to pick up in their near future. As soon as you can, uh, you start seeing earnings improve. <clears throat> you know the, the, the economy is like uh, the, the economy likely is soon to um, to follow, and with that, the local currency as well. There are a number of reports, ladies and gentlemen, that show uh, these growth expectations, but some carry more weight than others. This is uh, what is also uh, important not to miss. Um, the uh, housing sector, as I mentioned earlier, that we will have a look at the housing sector as well, is uh, one of the uh, most important for determining future direction because the delaying time is so great. As houses come into play at this moment, um, 
they're uh, not actually hitting the market right now, but they will hit the market for the next six months. <clears throat> of course, uh, it definitely gives you uh, some insight into where that particular sector thinks that things are going. And of course, when we mean things, this is the economy, uh, from there, currency follows. Trade is, uh, uh, trade is a key factor for uh, many countries, economies, and uh, although there are benefits to having a strong currency, uh, a rising currency means that the cost of that country's goods are rising against its competitors. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, uh, central banks here often will um, manage, is the soft word for manipulate, their currency by selling it after it rises to a unacceptable levels. China, for example, has uh, um, long plagued its yuan, so uh, much to the uh, uh, <clears throat> much of this uh, was uh, the uh, was seen by uh, last few U.S. Uh, administrations uh, to the value of the U.S. dollar, um, ensuring the cost of their goods not not to rise relatively to the dollar itself. And while, of course, uh, the Japanese yen floats, the uh, Japanese central bank uh, periodically in the past, as we have seen, has sold the yen when it became too strong relative to other currencies. That brings us to a more unprecedented uh, uh, point here, which is uh, geopolitical events. When uh, we all know, ladies and gentlemen, that the forex markets are open 24 hours a day, five days a week. Uh, um, they move fast when any news hits the market. Exchanges, uh, exchange rates react much more quickly to geopolitical events than other forms of investing. So uh, currencies are more volatile, which means uh, it's a 24 uh, market that reacts very quickly to news and events. These events include pretty much uh, anything that couldn't have been predicted, such as, uh, should we say, war, uh, civil unrest, uh, weather situations, or anything that causes uncertainty in any particular economy. These are, of course, pretty broad-based events. Uh, anything that is uh, bad enough news to a geopolitical basis is going to have an impact on currencies, obviously. Events in themselves do not move currencies. Uh, rather, uh, it is the underlying factor at play. Uh, let's have a, uh, a look at example. Uh, the uh, Libyan uh, civil unrest, uh, as we mentioned, is a good, good example. Uh, while the events are uh, stark enough, the real fear in the market uh, revolves around Libya's oil production and, more importantly, regional oil production if it leads to a contagion in the region, particularly to Saudi Arabia. If oil production is uh, threatened, then oil prices must rise. It's logical, which pushes gasoline prices eventually. Consumers then must uh, spend more on uh, gasoline or pet petrol products, leaving them less to spend elsewhere, which can lead to a stagnation in the economy, from there a devaluation of currency. As we mentioned one more time, everything is connected, ladies and gentlemen. And that means that even commodities play not a very small role in currency prices. Commodity prices, as we mentioned, also affect currencies differently, of course, depending on the use of those commodities in each country. A lot of that depends on whether a country is uh, an importer or exporter of a particular commodity. So that's why we'll have an example with crude oil for uh, one more time. Crude oil prices typically are a good example for Canada, which is generally thought of as a uh, currency uh, to uh, benefit most from rising oil prices 
because it exports a lot of oil. Alternatively, the United States often is uh, hindered from uh, rising oil prices because studies have shown that as gas prices rise, consumers cut spending on other um, on other type of uh, items and goods uh, to make up for the difference. Here we have to uh, uh, say, of course, uh, a word for Australia. The Aussie there also is very much connected to uh, gold because they're major producers. So the Aussie and the Canadian dollars react most quickly to commodity changes. The impact that commodity prices have on other currencies is probably more from a demand side, if uh, we have to look at it this way. So if demand is up, the Aussie and the Canadian get that boost right away. But then it's a matter of, uh, of where the demand is coming from to affect any other currencies, which will, of course, pr prolong the uh, uh, the uh, price movement. And of course, uh, to sum it up uh, in just a few sentences, as we uh, have been looking at uh, currencies, uh, they move for numerous of uh, reasons, ladies and gentlemen, ranging from uh, central bank actions to uh, weather disasters. It is important to remember, though, uh, that exchange rates are always expected uh, uh, sorry, um, are always uh, expressed in pairs. So you are always measuring pros and cons of two currencies. That's why you can not only look at uh, one country in particular and say that uh, this economy is doing well, so the currency will strengthen against everything. You have to look at the other currency as well, which you pair it with, uh, so you can compare both, which one is stronger than the other. But that, in most cases, for the uh, long term, does not play a role. It pr plays a role in the short term. This is how you can trade day to day. But for the long term, measuring currency strength is the most important factor. One more thing to consider is that uh, while currencies are uh, uh, measured by their relative strength versus other currencies, they uh, also are measured by their stability, as we already mentioned. The US dollar has long been the uh, reserve currency of the world. Why is that? For all its flaws, even today, it is seen as perhaps the most stable currency. So when the global credit crisis uh, hit the dollar, uh, the dollar rallied uh, straight away because then the dollar uh, has seen, even on a bad news, as a safe haven demand. This is all about fundamentals of currencies. It's not that difficult when you have all of this in front of you. This is the five rules of uh, fundamental currency trading. Write them down, ladies and gentlemen, or if you uh, did not manage to do so at this moment and you don't have the necessary tools to do so, please remember that uh, the sessions are recorded so you can watch this one more time when we upload it into our YouTube channel. You can um, fast forward or uh, rewind so you can uh, see what you've missed and what you don't understand. And if still doesn't make any sense, Please send us an email on the webinar at gdmfx.com and we will manage to get in touch with you straight away so we can help you out with that. I can see that there are a lot of questions flying here, so uh, I will, of course, um, attend to all of these questions, ladies and gentlemen. Don't, uh, don't think for a minute that uh, I've been neglecting them, but please remember it, we're advancing in time pretty rapidly at this moment so I will manage to get in touch with uh, each and every one of these questions that you're sending they are very good questions from uh, uh, a technical and fundamental perspective of course and I will approach each and every one of you and of course thank you for joining us uh, don't forget that the next webinar will be fundamental analysis for commodities this is next Wednesday sign up for it if you haven't done already and 
the last webinar, Measuring Currency Strength. Thank you very much for joining us. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.